Thanks for joining me for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. I'm so glad you're here with me today. We're talking about motivating the members of our security team. How do we do that? How do we motivate those uh, members? And I want to give you 14 suggestions, just mainly things that I'm talking about with you. So as we look at this, you know, what can we do? We need to motivate people to be on the team. We need to motivate people to uh, show up and be dedicated to uh, their duties as a security team member for the church, especially when they're scheduled. So we want to talk about those kind of things where we can just kind of reminders where how, how we can motivate these folks. The first one I think about, I want to dive right into it. The first one I think about is uh, creating a welcoming and fun space. You know, allow it to be okay for them to uh, enjoy s visiting with people that are coming in if they're assigned to like the lobby the front door you know visiting with people as they come in of course you're recommending that their heads on a swivel and they're looking at other things but they're also visiting and having fun as they're doing those kind of things as well and being able to joke with each other I think that's important to be able to have a light and a fun environment wherever they can we've got to do our duties we've also got to create that warm and welcoming environment and you know we got to keep it down a little bit we can't get too carried away to where our voices and our laughter and everything's echoing throughout the uh, auditorium if we're in the lobby just outside the auditorium but let's try to create a fun environment. That's one of my suggestions to motivate people. It's enjoyable for them to show up. Next, I think we should give positive feedback to our team members wherever we can. If you're a team leader or you're a lead, if you will, within the team, uh, I want to encourage people and, and, and I want to give them positive feedback wherever I can. What's their positives? They're friendly. They're outgoing. They're good about helping the, our elderly people in. They're good about watching the parking lot. You know, they show up when they're supposed to. We want to give them positive feedback on those kind of things because that motivates people. When they get recognized for things, that motivates them, you know, and so and maybe it's even you're getting them to try to work on some stuff where we're weak if it's we need to improve some things or we need to be better in the parking lot or better with uh, greeting people as they come in and being friendly as uh, our security team duties require maybe in some circumstances whatever that is compliment folks make give them positive feedback and encourage them to do more things uh, in that area and to do things uh, uh, continue to do things well i think that motivates people when they're getting positive feedback from you. Number three on my list is being okay with failure. As a team leader, I think that we need to be okay with failure. I mean, our people are, a lot of them are not security officers. That's not their profession. They're coming from other things or they don't have that experience. And I think getting them, if we tell them that if this happens, you've got to react and go deal with it. Uh, you need them to take the lead and go handle it if they see something starting to happen. And if they do that, but don't do it quite right, you and I need to accept that and encourage, you know, a new way of doing something or a little bit better, but not moving into crisis mode because they failed, especially in something small. We want these people to take a chance, if you will. And, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I talk about in our group is, we don't do these kind of things often so if some kind of struggle starts to break out or whatever you've got to go to it we can't be standing around looking for who's going to go to that situation no it's you you're the security team member you're seeing it happen so you need to go and as we encourage them to go to that if we are then critiquing them on that situation and hammering them that they do not do stuff exactly right they're not going to want to do that again in the future. They're not going to want to take a chance. And others around us uh, that are seeing this critiquing and, uh, and where we're not handling failure very well are not going to like it as well. So we want to accept some of that and encourage people, hey, try your best. Maybe next time we'll do this or try this, but encourage that. And we shouldn't be freaking out over these small failures or small issues, I don't believe. Fourth, I think we need to provide leadership and growth opportunities within the team, especially if there's more than two or three of you. And I know on average we're dealing with most teams are less than 10 people if I look at our 
studies and our statistics. If you're getting under the four, five, six people on your team, I think there's room to make opportunities for growth for them, you know, and, and leadership, moving up kind of thing. People like that. People like having a little bit more responsibility or the ones that don't like it won't tend to do that kind of stuff. But, you know, having team members on your security team, team leaders, maybe security supervisor, whatever you might call them, but those opportunities where they can move up and then recognize them for their experience levels or their accomplishments, you know, make training opportunities for them where they can take this course or take this and and uh, bring in a, a, a guest speaker to give them a certification level or something along those lines. Maybe if they accomplish uh, shooting very well or accomplish practicing every quarter, maybe you add the word master to their uh, title, maybe master team leader or something. I don't know what it might be. Whatever you're comfortable with, but creating different levels for your team so that they can move up a little bit and they can also be recognized for accomplishments. You know, within that, we might also, within this growth opportunity idea, we might also let them handle special projects, assign somebody to uh, come up with new name tags or come up with new badges that we wear, you know, the plastic badges around our neck and the, and the strings that hold them on the lanyards. You know, and give somebody that opportunity. It's a great opportunity for somebody to do that. Maybe it's researching new equipment, radios, new radios. You know, give them those opportunities and then maybe they research it or two of them research it and then come back to you to make those uh, final decisions, however that hierarchy works in your group. But giving them opportunities within the team is great for growth and for people to be interested and to be loyal and to maintain interest. It's very important. Next, I'm looking at being flexible with their schedules. You know, a mot motivating factor is, is having some flexibility with what we need to do. If they need to go on a vacation or something, we're not, we're not being negative about it. We're letting them do that and we're figuring out where we can uh, uh, fix that schedule or where we can fill it, who can fill that up, but giving them opportunities. You know, there may be, I, I've got opportunities every once in a while where I'll have a person come to me and say they need to sit with their wife next week or their spouse next week and make sure and do that. They need some time with them or maybe it's even today that they bring it up that that's, they're having a bad day and they really feel like they need to go in and sit with their significant other or their spouse. And so you know, that's stuff that you and I need to look at. We need to try to schedule for that and have an extra person if we can here and there for those kind of opportunities, but give them those chances. The other day, we had a special event going on at uh, our church, and uh, one of the uh, security team members, his daughter showed up to church, and we hadn't seen her there. I haven't seen her there for a couple of years. It's been a while. And so I just went up to him. He didn't even ask. And uh, after all the people were in and, and the service was running, so things were minimized as far as what activity we had, I just went up to him and said, hey, uh, why don't you go in and sit with your daughter? And he was like, wow, really? And, and I told him to go on in there and do that. We're being flexible. We're working on our scheduling and all that kind of stuff because that's motivating. He was extremely happy. And I know that meant a lot to him to be able to do that. And, and that was the right thing to do for him to give him that opportunity to sit with his daughter over being out there standing in the lobby with the rest of us uh, on that specific event. And next, you know, I think we got to kind of push the work life balance. And I think we've got to let our folks be uh, balanced and take block times out. Uh, where they're, they're not available for a couple of weeks and make sure that they're not, maybe even the person that serves on the security ministry a lot, maybe even we suggest once in a while that they take a day off and sit with their family or take a day off and relax a little bit, enjoy the service. I think those kind of life balance things are important. And that kind of goes back to the, you know, uh, making allowances for people to sit with their families or sit with their spouse uh, if they show, a, a, a express a need to do that right away or in the near future, we need to make sure and be conscious of that, you know, that balance of their scheduling and that kind of thing. And, you know, we're not even taking into account the spiritual aspect of things. 
And, you know, we want to still get them to be fed and be able to worship and have all of that time as well every once in a while. Rolling in at number seven, I think the next thing is we need to make sure we have clear objectives for our team members on the security team. So we need them to understand what's expected of them, how often we expect them to be there, what we expect them to do when they're on duty, if you will, you know, how we'd like them to patrol, when we want them to do those kind of things, what areas that we need to watch. And that needs to be more of a long term. We don't want to be uh, bouncing them around and, and thinking that, hey, last week you told me this and this week now you want me to do this kind of thing. We need to make sure that those goals, objectives, those things are very clear and we're kind of maybe setting those things out. We're meeting with our leaders and we understand what we need to do. We know statistically what's going on with churches and we have a plan. We know our objective and what kind of things that we want to be done before, during and after services. And we can clearly express those things to them so they feel confident and then they can accomplish those things and not worry about uh, uh, being told to, that they're not doing something right. Very important. Next, I think we want to be transparent. You know, we want people to know, we want our team to know as much as we can tell them. If we know what future plans are or what changes are coming about, we need to start letting them know as soon as it's applicable because we don't want them to feel like they're out of the loop. We don't want them to feel like they're not being told things because that leads to negativity. And we certainly, we do not uh, want those kind of things. We wanna make sure that team members feel like they can get honest and straight answers from you about future plans, about future directions of that security team. So transparency is very important with these folks. You know, they're adults. Many of them are gonna be professionals. They're not outside of church. They're not security professionals, maybe. Maybe they're not law enforcement, but these are adults and professionals. We can clue them into what's going on. We can be open and honest with them so that they feel comfortable, that they know where things are going and that they're part of the team, that they're in the loop, if you will. Next, getting to know your team members. I think it's very important to go do things together, go shooting, have a barbecue, have a sit down, getting to know your team members and what motivates them or what their perspectives are is very, very important to this overall motivation of your team and your team members. You know, having a personal connection with them is a motivation in general, and they're more likely to uh, work hard, show up, and do well for you if they're motivated and if they also feel a connection with you. Rolling in at number 10, I think we need to offer opportunities of training and what we might call self-development, if you will. Giving them, uh, the, the members of your team, you know, they're valuable to you, to the, to the church. They feel value to themselves and they also want opportunities to learn new skills. And I think that we should be giving those kind of opportunities to them. Provide them with training to advance, whether it's medic first aid training, firearms training, uh, communication training, whatever that might be, whenever you can give them. We don't want to just get together, as we're going to talk about, and have dull training. We want to have things where we can give them something valuable, maybe even bring in an expert, and maybe even give them a certificate for it so that they can add to their credentials, if you will. That's very important to people to do that, and it's a great motivation with them. Maybe even if it's some sort of technology or some piece of equipment that you turn over to somebody and let them become the knowledgeable, the go-to person, maybe even the expert, as we might call them, on that piece of equipment or that technology that you might use uh, and as part of helping the team get used to it, taking care of it, purchasing it, all of those kind of things. That can be a huge motivation for somebody on the team to be uh, afforded that opportunity and you know honestly if you're a team leader you don't want to be having to do all of those kind of things anyway so uh, delegate some of that stuff it, because as you delegate it it takes it off your plate and it motivates other people long term as part of the uh, team if you will next we want to foster collaboration and, and more teamwork which will motivate people by you know asking them for their input 
soliciting what they think about something. What equipment should we use? What do they want? Those kind of things and uh, getting their buy-in into that process, you know, and whenever possible, if they make suggestions, try to implement their, their suggestions, make that the solution to the situation. So people enjoy the opportunity to have input into something and, uh, you know, when they can offer valuable information to you uh, and, and help be part of the solution, then that also helps again for us to draw together and helps to motivate them as well. So simply asking for their suggestion can be a great opportunity. Next, I just want to say, you know, we shouldn't be micromanaging. I mean, these are things that can be done as long as we're providing the plan, we're giving them the overall outlook, what our goals or what our uh, uh, direction is. We shouldn't have to micromanage, and micromanaging is a very much a negative thing. Standing over them, making sure they do everything exactly on time, making sure they're doing their patrolling in the parking lot at the exact right time, whatever that is. Give them that idea and don't micromanage them. Let them do that. I mean, these are gonna be adults. They're gonna be professionals in other professions. And so give them the information, maybe watch them from a distance, make sure it's happening fairly close to your expectations, but don't micromanage them. Next, and I think this is a big one because your meetings can help tie things together. And we've talked about meetings and trainings in several of these areas and communication. So uh, next at number 13 is don't have useless meetings. You know, we don't want these meetings that just run on and basically are nothing. We want to respect people's time. We want to provide value where we can. We're also trying to limit the church's liabilities, people's liabilities. So we need to have value uh, in these meetings. So make a valuable topic for them to train on. And, you know, we should be doing this every so often. And, and we should show them that we value them by having them show up, take care of what we need to take care of, have a quick little training to help improve their time and then get them on their way. And last but not least, I just, I'm putting a blanket statement out here and that is encourage happiness. Wherever you have the opportunity to do that, I think happiness is a general motivation. It's, a, it's something that draws us together, most of us. It can be a great motivation to encourage happiness wherever you can within this group. So this will mentally help your team members uh, and it'll make them more enthusiastic, more positive uh, generally. And honestly, happiness is uh, infectious for the team. And don't forget, it's also uh, great for our church and our interaction with the members of the church as they're coming in and out. If we're uh, happy people or if we're on the light side and we're motivated to be happy and be part of that welcoming uh, aspect, a warm and friendly and welcoming aspect of the church. So thanks for uh, being here with me for this great topic. I enjoy spending time with you offering suggestions. You know, and if you find value in the material that I'm providing, I hope you'll hit a like button wherever you're watching this. Maybe even subscribe, especially if you're here on YouTube or follow us if you're on a, another page. And you know, it would be great to hear from you. Leave a comment for me down below or wherever you can, send me a comment. I try to respond to as many of those as I can and, uh, and interact with you and get your feedback and uh, hear from you and try to encourage you and give you feedback as well in my responses. Don't forget, uh, we have our hub over at churchsecurityanswerman.com churchsecurityanswerman.com there's all kinds of information free information formal discussions or formal training and discussions over there forms all kinds of stuff that you can use uh, for your ministry and for keeping things going and keeping things motivated if you will until we uh, have the next video until i see you on the next video i hope you have a safe and secure week